Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and I know, I know, I have been getting a lot of comments on the work folders video that I did for you guys a while back. I don't even know how long ago it was, but a lot of you is like, how do you use it? You showed us how to configure it, but how do you use it? How can you set it up on a client's machine? So I was like, okay, let me rebuild my infrastructure. Let me build up my virtual machine server and show you guys how to do it. So before I even show you how to configure the client side, I'm going to uh, give you a sum up. So what you need to do is you need to get into your server manager, go to manage, and uh, you want to go to add roles and features. You want to click on next, 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 and you want to go into your file and storage services go to iSCSI services and you want to install the work folders once you click on work folders you want to uh, once you do that you want to install your web server IIS stuff as well either default once you're done you're good to go and you want to go into your uh, server manager go into the portion right here the file storage services go into the work folder and I already created one from the last video and to create one, all you're gonna to need to do is go to task, new sync server, or new sync share, click on next, uh, give it a path. For me, I gave it locally, because most likely this server that you're building is gonna be your work folder ser uh, server. Uh, give it a path, once you give it a path, you give it a user folder shortcut, uh, sync share names, sync access, if this folder is only gonna be for specific people on your um, environment, Go for it. For me, I gave everyone access because I want everyone to have access to it. Uh, device policies, confirmation, and results, and then and that's it. Once you do all that, you can get yourself a nice little folder uh, within the whatever location that you place it in. For me, I placed it inside the C drive. I called it shared work folders. And as you can see, I already have an alias. Because remember, you can either create an alias or the email address will be like batman at bjtech.edu but i just use the alias as batman and uh for my active directory i logged in into my client machine as robin this is my client machine it is already part of the domain as you can see and it locked me out so i'm gonna log in i'm already part of the domain uh this is windows 8.1 and my work folder server is actually Windows 2000 and actually it's not it's not Windows 2012 so I actually am using the Windows Server 10 but again work folders work well if you're using Windows 2012 R2 and up and uh, I couldn't find my iOS copy for Windows Server 2012 R2 I had to, I had Windows 10 and I was like let's check it out if it has it and it has it and it's working flawless so that's pretty awesome um, so once you got your client up and running your client is already added to the domain with no problem so uh, once you have your share folder or your sync share folder right you gotta make sure you kinda enable your SMB access basically you gotta share it out to your network and give the correct permissions to that folder uh, for me I made this folder uh, accessible to anyone so if I go to my client right now and do a uh, Windows R and I go to BJ-DC1 uh, it should go in I should see my share and in the work folder right so the next thing is once you do all that and then if you guys if I went too fast go back to the previous video because I break it down for you next step is how do you set up your clients now setting up your clients is extremely easy all you need to do is you're going to right click and you want to go into your control panel. Within control panel, if you make everything small, you're going to have an option that says work folders. You click on work folders, you go to set up work folder, and you're going to work you're going to give the work email address. Uh, my work email address will normally be the person that is logging in. I mean, I'm logged in as Robin at bj.edu, which would be their domain. And you hit enter work folder the work folder would be again we did SSL uh, I think on the last video I showed you guys how to do a self sign certificate but if you want to take it to another level and to the point that you want people from outside of your network to have access to your work folders most likely you need to get a trusted SSL certificate and go to a hosted site and purchase an SSL certificate but I'm doing everything in-house 
So the work folder would be actually HTTPS because I am using the security protocol and it would be the name of the server dots uh, and the domain location. So uh, this is the name of the server, which I'm going to show you guys. This is the name of the server, which is um, bj-dc1. I'm doing everything in one server. I know it's bad practice, but you know. <laughs> and uh, there you go. So you click on next. And I want to show you guys something because this is what the error, this is the error that you're going to get. And you're probably saying, I did everything right. I followed you. What's going on? If you look at the details, it's basically saying the server SSL certificate was issued by a certificate authority that isn't trusted by your PC. What does that mean? Because I created a self-signed certificate, it's that self-signed certificate is only available for my server. It's not pushed out to all other machines on the floor. So what that means, you actually got to get a little smart. Uh, do a batch file or push it out through SCCM or do a group policy. Do whatever you need to do to push out that self-signed certificate that we created on the our work uh, folder server and push it out to all your clients. I'm not going to get all technical, so what I'm going to do is take the easy route. So I'm going to do a Windows R. I'm going to go to my MMC and I'm going to go to File and add remove snapping and I'm going to add the certificates and I want computer accounts local accounts because remember that the self signed certificate was on locally on this machine on this server so we're going to go into our trusted root and go to certificates and this is the certificate that we need okay this is the certificates that is assigned to our work folder um, you know uh, DNS stuff uh, we're going to right click on it and go to all tasks and we're going to export it uh, follow the prompts, go to next. No, I'm, I don't want to export the private key as of now because, again, this is all in house. This is my security level is really low. So I don't really want to go too crazy about that. So let's click on next. I'm going to leave the default, click on next, uh, give it a path. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to drop it in the work folder. Uh, give it a name. I'm going to call it cert. And we're going to hit save and then next and finish. And the export is completed. It's really fast. And the next thing that you need to do, I'm going to close this up. And let's get into our client. And within our client, right, with our client, I'm going to do a Windows R and get into our share right here, work folder, and there goes our certificate. Beautiful. And we're going to close that. And the certificate. So you got two ways to do this. You got to double click on it and do it that way. I like to go to Windows R and do an MMC. And I like to go to file, add and remove a snap in and add the certificate. I don't know why I like doing this. I just, I don't know. I just like doing it this way a little bit better. There it go. There it goes. Right click, go to all tasks, import. And next, tell it where you drop that certificate. I drop mine on the desktop. Press OK. Next, next, finish. Yes, I do trust it import successfully awesome as you can see our certificate is imported into our uh, client so now if I click on next everything should work well so let's click on next and there we go so awesome user Robin workforce uh, work folders is going to be changed you can actually change the location is up to you and we're going to click next and the location does not have enough free space choose a different location up to six gives a space of on the drive workflows can use latest oh wow so I'm running low on this space so that's let's see how much space I have oh my god I'm running I'm really running low that's crazy so I'm running low on the server so that kind of sucks well actually I'm running low on the client side so that means there is a requirement for your client side that you have to have you have to have enough space for this to work so and I can't I can't continue if I don't have enough space. But this is how you guys get up and running with the client stuff. Um, again, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them right below. Uh, don't forget about hitting that like button if you support this guy as well as the video. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. If you have any questions about this, leave it at the bottom of the comment section. I'm you know I'm here for you guys. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.